गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर टेंथ एंड एलेवेंथ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन से इज सटकोशिया टाइगर रिजर्व दैट वॉज रिसेंटली मेकिंग न्यूज इज इन विच स्टेट सो दिस टाइगर रिजर्व लाइज इन द स्टेट ऑफ उड़ीसा एंड वाई इट इज इन न्यूज बिकॉज two highly decomposed elephant carcasses were recently discovered here and this reserve is situated in odisha which spans in across four districts these are angul katak baud and nayagarh okay so the reserve covers a vast area of 1136.7 square kilometers with 523.61 square kilometers designated as core area also it is part of mahanadi elephant reserve and serve as the confluence of two significant biogeographic regions in india these are deccan peninsula and the eastern ghats so the terrain of satkoshia is characterized by hills which are moderate to steep slope and with narrow valleys and this forest primarily consists of north indian tropical moist deciduous forest and moist peninsular low level sal basically the sal trees dominate the landscape which often grows in dense clusters alongside species like asan dhaura bamboo and simal so the reserve is home to a variety of wildlife also like tigers leopards spotted deer barking deer bison wild dogs sloth bear jackal etc also it provides a natural habitat for two endangered species the first one is fresh water crocodile and the second one is ghadiyal okay simply you have to remember that satkoshia tiger reserve lies in the state of odisha another important tiger reserve from odisha state is the simlipal simlipal tiger reserve right indian government launched the project tiger in which year answer would be 1973 and when do we observe the international tiger day so that is 29th of july okay the next question says the 12 feet high statue of mahatma gandhi was inaugurated recently along with gandhi vatika in which indian city actually on 4th of september 2023 president of india draupadi murmu unveiled a 12 foot statue of mahatma gandhi and inaugurated the gandhi vatika at gandhi darshan in new delhi city so she actually praised gandhi's global influence which highlights his non violence principles during times of world turmoil like the world wars and also she cited leaders such as nelson mandela martin luther king junior and barack obama who followed gandhi's path for world welfare and she emphasized the role of different institutions like gandhi smriti and darshan smriti in promoting his teachings through various media right so recently this 12 feet high statue of mahatma gandhi has been inaugurated in new delhi city talking about president draupadi murmu don't forget that few days back she received the highest civilian award of the country suriname right and if you talk about our prime minister narendra modi recently narendra modi received three international awards that are important the first one is highest award of the country egypt known as order of the nile the second is highest civilian and military honor of the country france and with this Narendra Modi is the first Indian prime minister to receive the France's highest civilian and military honor and the third prize is the highest honors from Fiji and Papua New Guinea countries okay next is MQ9B predator drone that was in news recently was developed by which country actually india is finalizing a letter of request to the us government to acquire 31 MQ-9B Predator drones from the General Atomics and these drones 
are a variant of MQ-9 Reaper, which offers remote or autonomous flight capabilities. And also it can carry strike missiles for precise target elimination. So these are developed by the General Atomics and it comes in two versions. The first is Sky Guardian and the second one is Sea Guardian. So the Indian Navy already operates the MQ-9B Sea Guardian since 2020 and with a payload of more than 5,670 kgs, the drone can fly above 40,000 feet for 40 hours, making it valuable for surveillance, warfare and different type of roles, including integration into civil aerospace, right? So MQ-9B Predator drone was developed by the country US and now India is willing to purchase 31 MQ-9B Predator drones from General Atomics, okay? So that's why it was in news. Now, here we will discuss two important defense related current affairs. First of all, Kinzel missile is in news these days. Why? Because the first Su-34 bomber crew to launch this Kinzel missile in Ukraine received the state awards recently. And it is basically a Russian air launched hypersonic ballistic missile that is capable of carrying the conventional or nuclear warheads with a 480 kgs of payload right and it achieves the speeds up to Mach 10 that means 12,350 kilometers per hour and it has a range of 1500 to 2000 kilometers so basically it is launched from MiG-31 jets at 18 kilometers of altitude and it has a length of 8 meters fine simply you can be asked that Kinzel missile that was recently making news is developed by which country answer would be Russia okay the second question is regarding Hero Kim Kun Ok can you tell me it is which type of defense equipment actually North Korea has recently launched its first operational tactical nuclear attack submarine named as Hero Kim Kun Ok and assigned it to patrol the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. Okay, so it is a type of submarine. Okay, so these two questions are also important. Next question is LRO that is Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter was launched by which particular space agency? So it was launched by NASA and recently it captured an image of India's Chandrayaan 3 lander and this orbiter was launched in the year 2009 with the basic objective of creating a 3D map of the moon's surface from a polar orbit. So it is equipped with total seven science instruments, including a powerful telescope and a camera system that can actually discern the details as small as 2.5 meters across. So this LRO has played an important role in lunar geology mineralogy and environmental studies and it orbits the moon in an eccentric polar mapping orbit and one of its remarkable instrument is a laser altimeter which actually measures the reflection times to produce precise 3d maps of the lunar surface so this spacecraft also carries the instruments that are designed to explore the dark craters for signs of water ice and a temperature sensor that uncovered the coldest spot in the solar system okay simply have to remember that LRO was launched by NASA in the year 2009 now here if we talk about our Chandrayaan 3 it was launched on 14th of July 2023 and finally it landed on 23rd of August 2023 Chandrayaan first was launched in the year 2008 Chandrayaan 2 was launched in 2019, right? So this time the Chandrayaan has only two parts, lander and rover. It does not possess any type of orbiter because the orbiter that we used during Chandrayaan 2 is already there in the moon's orbit, right? So this time we do not need to launch any orbiter. What is the name of lander? It is Vikram and the name of the rover is Pragyan. It is same as Chandrayaan 2. Which rocket was used to launch this Chandrayaan-3 
spacecraft answer would be lvm3 m4 rocket which is also known as fat boy right it was launched from shri harikota andhra pradesh who is the current isro chief mr s som nath with this we are the fourth country to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon also we are the first country to successfully land a spacecraft on moon's south pole right so these are some of the important points regarding chandrayaan 3 next question is which railway station was recently awarded the green railway station certification with the highest rating of platinum by the indian green building council this one is vijayawada railway station andhra pradesh recently it achieved the prestigious green railway station certification that received the highest platinum rating from the indian green building council which is a division of the confederation of indian industry that was founded in the year 2001 so igbc basically serves as india's foremost certification body that offers different type of services like green building rating programs certification and training and they host the annual green building congress and actively participate in global discussions on environmental issues so the station's rating considers six key environmental categories which are these the first one is sustainable facilities second is health and sanitation third is energy and water efficiency the fourth one is smart and green initiatives fifth one is innovation and the sixth one is waste management okay so the headquarters of igbc is located in hyderabad fine right? now let's have a look on different type of awards and honors here we'll discuss three important awards the first one is recently pravina anjana has won miss international india event right and now she will be representing india at miss international occasion that is to be held in the country japan in the month of october right and uh, pravina anjana is basically a chartered accountant and she is from the state rajasthan the second one is miss earth india 2023 event and it was won by priya sen again she is from rajasthan and now she will be representing india at miss earth 2023 the venue of which is vietnam and it would take place in the month of december after that don't forget that recently shanta totam has been honored with world innovation award at brics innovation forum fine the next question is who are the main beneficiaries of project naman that is launched by the indian army So Indian Army has launched the project Naman to establish facilitation and grievance redressal centers for veterans and the families of personnel who sacrificed their lives for the nation. And the first center will be located in Delhi. Okay? So Naman will house a common service center that provides government to customer services including pension account updates on the Sparsh portal. Fine. So this portal is initiated by Ministry of Defence and it is designed to manage the pension sanction and disbursement for the armed forces including the army navy air force and defence capabilities civilians so this system offers complete transparency to defence pensioners which record their pension history from its inception to the end of the pension due to the last eligible beneficiary and the defense accounts department under the principal control of defense account will oversee this comprehensive system which would actually handle all all type of aspects of the pension cycle including initiation sanction and disbursement and grievance resolution okay so project naman and the sparsh portal basically aims to enhance the support and services for the indian army veterans and their families So your correct answer would be veterans and families of deceased personnel. Now apart from it, these days Gilbert Hill is in news. Can you tell me it lies in which state of India? So it is a monolith column of black basalt rock, and it is found in the state of Maharashtra. Why it is in news? Because 
the maharashtra government has proposed to transform the gilbert hill which is a 200 foot monolithic column of black basalt rock in mumbai into a tourist attraction that is similar to burj khalifa of dubai fine so it was declared as a national park in the year 1952 and categorized as grade 2 heritage structure by the bmc in 2000 Seven, and Gilbert Hill is one of the only three volcanic rock outcrops globally. Fine. So this project aims to boost tourism and conservation efforts so that we can preserve this ancient relic for future generations. Fine. So that's why it was in news. Gilbert Hill lies in the state of Maharashtra. Next is Koraput Kalajira rice, which got the GI status recently, is cultivated in which Indian state? First of all this variety of rice is known as prince of rice and recently it got the GI tag it is indigenous to Koraput district of Odisha state fine so it has been cultivated for generations by the local farmers here and it is similar to coriander seeds and uh, it is known for its excellent nutritional and cooking qualities it is grown by the region's tribal communities for thousands of years and it is celebrated for its black color and rich taste not only in koraput district also it is found in tolla patraput pujariput baliguda and mahol fine simply you have to remember that koraput kala jeera rice has got the gi tag recently and it is cultivated in the state of odisha here let's talk about some of the important products that have got the gi tag these days the first one is wood carvings of ladakh right they have got the gi tag few days back second one is kambam grapes this is a variety of grape and it is a product of tamil nadu state recently it got the gi tag from tamil nadu there is one more product that has received the certification answer would be mana madurai pottery okay now from jammu and kashmir there are bulk of products that got the gi tag this year the first one is basoli painting the second one is rajori chikri wood craft third one is mushk buddhi ji rice the fourth one is moral mushrooms etc okay and from goa there is a variety of mango that has got the gi tag what is the name of it mankurat mango fine next is what is the primary purpose of the national carbon registry launched by the united nations development program in august 2023 actually national carbon registry is an open source software that allows different countries to manage their carbon credit trading data and process and this software was launched by the united nations development program in the month of august it is the first of its kind to allow the countries to customize the code of their specific need right so this registry supported by the digital for climate working group which includes the UNDP world bank UNF triple C and EBRD and the group aims to build a digital public infrastructure so that they can address the climate challenges and carbon markets so the carbon registry system allows the companies to track their emissions and then offset them by investing in emission reducing project for example a company might invest in a project that captures the methane from a landfill or replaces high emitting light bulbs with low emitting led lights okay and this framework is based on globally recognized iso standards fine so your correct answer would be to track the emissions and invest in emission reducing projects now apart from it can you tell me umiyam lake is located in which state so answer would be meghalaya and why this lake is in news because the meghalaya government has adopted artificial intelligence enabled robotic technology to safeguard umiyam lake which is a prominent tourist attraction okay also it is known as barapani lake and it offers water sports and adventure activities making it a favored destination in the meghalaya state simply you have to remember that umiyam lake is located in meghalaya now apart from it the sea tap is an initiative of which organization 
what is the full form of CTAP? COVID-19 Technology Access Pool. So it is the initiative of World Health Organization. And recently, CTAP has secured three type of new licensing agreements via the Medicines Patent Pool that was launched in May 2020. So its mission is to facilitate the voluntary sharing on intellectual property, knowledge and data among developers of COVID-19 treatments, diagnostic, vaccine and health products. So this initiative aims to explore the technological advancement and enhance the global production capacity to combat the pandemic, right? So CTAP is an initiative of World Health Organization. Next is, what is the conservation status of a stump-tailed macuque as per the IUCN red list? So these are actually vulnerable as per the IUCN. And recently, eight stump-tailed macaques were recently relocated to the Delhi Zoo from Azol Zoological Park in Mizoram. Okay, so these monkeys belong to the Old World monkey species Macaca archetoids, and they are primarily found in the tropical and subtropical evergreen forest of South Asia. So their natural habitat spans to Cambodia, Southwest China. Northeastern India, Myanmar, etc. And they are classified as vulnerable on the IUCN red list and they are protected under India's Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 as per its schedule 2. Fine. So here correct answer would be vulnerable. Talking about IUCN, it was formed in the year 1948 and the headquarter lies in Geneva, Switzerland. Don't forget that the second edition of IUCN leaders forum will be held in Geneva, Switzerland from 12th and 13th of October 2023. Now the last question says, Banglar Mati Banglar Jol is a patriotic song written by whom? Actually what happened is, on 7th of September, the West Bengal Assembly has adopted a resolution to celebrate the first day of the Bengali calendar that is Poila Baisak as Bangla Divas, that is Bengal Day. So this decision was made with 167 MLAs in favor and 62 against. Okay. So West Bengal Legislative Assembly also passed a resolution officially designating Banglar Mati Banglar Jol as the state song of West Bengal state. So it is a Bengali patriotic song that was written by Rabindranath Tagore in 1905 in support of the Banga Banga Roll movement in Bengal that was initiated by Rabindranath Tagore and he launched the Raksha Bandhan Utsav as well in the year 1905 aim of which was to unite Hindu and Muslim Bengalis who were protesting against the partition of Bengal that was happened in 1905. So on that significant day, Banglar Mati Banglar Jol became the rallying cry of the movement which actually symbolizes the unity and resilience and this musical notation for the song was provided by Indra Devi Chaudhrani. Fine. So, Banglar Mati Banglar Jol is a patriotic song written by Rabindranath Tagore. And now it would be the state song of West Bengal. Fine. So, these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. And now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide, you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two, three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Minus Hatsana signing off.